Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rinse at a time, back with his good friend, the lumberjack landlord. How you doing, buddy? I'm Zuber and super excited. Thank God I got a haircut because I couldn't find my hat. There you go. There you go. You look, you look clean, man. You look good. <laughs> Showered uh, too. Oh, there you go. One, once a week, whether you like it or not. Got it. Got it. We was a hose, but whatever. <laughs> it still counts. It still counts. It still counts. <laughs> hey, uh, we got to talk about Phoenix and Vegas because I just got off the phone with a, a Phoenix uh, agent who is detail oriented, data driven, like Brian Lebo in Vegas. Okay. And I am shocked to tell you that I think Phoenix and Vegas are set up structurally different. And it shocks me. So, okay. Uh, I, I, so being a buyer in the Vegas market, I would like to know what you saw in that conversation with that person to yeah. give you the idea that, that there is a dislocation between those two markets. Cause I look at them as, as somebody who just started looking at Vegas, I look at it very hot weather, great retirement area, um, booming, I mean, beyond top, I mean, top three booming economies, um, booming housing. Mm -hmm. um, now the kind of the reverse has started to happen. And we talked a little bit about, you know, kind of, you know, what's in Arizona and what's in Phoenix and kind of some of those areas where they're seeing a massive influx of, of, um, of investment. But let me hear what they had to say. Yeah. What it really boils down to is where, um, where John, who's the Phoenix agent, where Brian, who's the Vegas agent, thinks the maximum pain is going to come, okay. right? Brian Lebo has been said, and I believe he shared with you, he believes that by this, by Q1 of next year, maximum pain, 750 grand to 1.5. Yes. Totally right? agree. Right. Above the median, it's about mm -hmm. 50, 50 to 100% above the median is where max pain is. Why? Because that's where all the new development is. Nothing. Yeah. No, it's, it's just that. Yeah. Phoenix, completely the opposite. This is John's opinion. Okay. okay. Two different opinions. Okay. And again, this is somewhat data. So it's intelligent, but John is telling me, we just got off the phone. It's it posted at seven o'clock on the 14th. Mm -hmm. John is like, Hey, my median in Phoenix is five Oh four. So that's the number, right? He says, oh. we are seeing a record spikes in inventory. Um, single family homes are up to 12,000, just single families. And he's like, Michael, the predominant amount of the new listings are below the median. Like that, there were, that was like 4,000, like 60 days ago. Yeah. He, that's what he said. Is he said more than tripled since the low of March, more than tripled. Yeah. That was like 4,000. And again, but think about it, the max pain. And I'm like, and I had, and I, if people watch the video, I asked him like three times just to make sure I was hearing it correctly. I was like, cause, cause Phoenix is guaranteed to have a median price drop guaranteed. If yeah. all the inventory. And again, what we found <clears> is that's <throat> where the investors are open door below the median wall street yeah. below the median. So, you know, build, if, rent. If, build for rent. Yeah. So again, if you, if you're 504 and you were 515 just a month before, and all these listings are coming below the median and you have need versus want, and you, you get, you know, you're not paying 490. Now you're paying 470. The median price in Phoenix is coming down. Brian tells us in Vegas below the median, right? Again, I don't remember what it was. It's called the median in Vegas, like 475. He's like, he's like below 400, Mike, I've got nothing. And when it right. comes on, it Correct. gets sold. Correct. Yeah. Right. So again, yeah. structurally yes. in Vegas, you're just being pulled higher. Yes. In Phoenix, you're being pulled lower. It's, I did not expect that. And again, I, yeah. I'm going to check this out. I would guess Phoenix population. What do you want to guess? You think Phoenix population is three X Vegas? Let's take a wild ass guess. Three X? No, I would guess it's, I would guess it's probably twice the size. Cause I think Vegas is around 4 million now. I don't think Phoenix is 8 million or 12 million. I mean, let's see. So let's do Las Vegas population. Vegas is four, right? Well, I got a Vegas population of 644,000. Oh, this is, let's say Vegas County. How about that? Maybe that's the city. Oh, it says 644. But then Henderson is 309, Reno's, no, so that's what they say. So it says Vegas County population is 644. I thought it was like three or four million, but right, well, I, I mean, I guess, sure. Yeah, I don't know. That doesn't feel right. I knew it was small. I would have guessed it was a million. Yeah, and then see, Phoenix population is 1.6. Okay. So it's 3X, yeah. Okay, so it's 3X. So. And again, so it, says I, the, it says the current metro, it says the current metro area population of Phoenix in 2022 is 4.6 million people. So that's probably the metro area population. Yeah. So that's the MSA. Yes. Yeah, so that counts all the cities. So what is that for Vegas? So 4.6 million. 
I'm looking right now. Two eight. Yeah. So it's double, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So I, that, yeah. So I figure about that. Yeah. So, so the other thing, again, I'm just pulling this together. Cause again, I, th- I would have assumed Phoenix and Vegas were sisters. Yeah. Now they're, I don't know, cousins or something. They're just different, right? <laughs> Neighbors, whatever. Um, mm-hmm. <clears throat> because again, I think Phoenix is obviously an older town. I think that's also sure. fair, right? A lot of their housing yeah. stock is older. Yep. Uh, I think a lot of Vegas has been done over the last 10 years. A lot of new development, all bigger stuff. Um, so yeah, I was shocked to hear that. I don't see how Phoenix, again, John and I talked about it. Phoenix could see a uh, 15 to 20% correction crash in median home price because of structural differences. Yeah. When most of your inventory is below the median, that's just going to pull it down. Vegas is exactly the opposite. There's just not enough on the low end to pull it down that much. And I don't think, I don't think either market is healthy. Don't, I'm not saying either market's healthy. Both markets suck, but they're, they're structurally much different than I thought. What do you think? Um, <clears throat> I'm available to be hired by open door to fix their problem. <laughs> You're just going to put them out of business. No, they need to be, they, they need to be, put, they need to be landlords. That's what yeah. they need to do. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> and they need to pivot now. They needed to actually do it three months ago when they said they should, when, when six months ago, when we were talking about Zillow doing it, yeah. but yeah, I mean, I think that, I mean, that number is going to come down significantly because they're going to take a buyout number on the thousand listings that they have. I mean, think about that concentration in one market yeah. and think about the fact that it's going on sale. Like when Zillow did their deal, it was 2000 homes. Um, and then they locked in their losses. Right. I think that Open Door is going to end up having to do exactly the same thing. I think yeah. that that business, unless but yeah, but it, the, it Open Door's Open Door's in for a pile of pain because at least Zillow got out when the market was still like this. Sure, a right? little bit, yeah, yeah, sure. Well, yeah. the cash though, so right, so it's one of those things where you know maybe there's maybe there's something there, but I you know I'm thinking, but yeah, like Open Door's finished, man. No, Open Door's finished, and like yeah. and 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 again, I mean, you know. Um, the greatest, the greatest sub two investor in our time, Pace Morby, he's going to have arms of his businesses that he's going to have to shut down, period, end of story. Mm-hmm. Like that flipping part of his business will no longer make sense. Yeah, unless you get a, yeah, I think there's no, I think all flippers um, who have been built a model uh, in a machine, not a model machine, have to slow down, have to get super. But again, the beauty about Pace is he's been investing ahead. So he'll shut down that arm or greatly. So, and I, t- I talked to Cody his partner the other day and they are so good for them, right? They're getting smaller, yep. uh, but his, his sub two business is going to go banana. That's what I'm saying. Like pace doesn't end up a net loser. No, no. He ends no. up a massive net winner. Just get a, I mean, but exactly. They, they did it the right thing. You know, I was watching, I was binge watching their series, maybe, I don't know, two months ago. And I was just like, that's awesome. I know that that footage is probably about eight months old, right. um, but that footage is awesome. And I was like, they better get out now. Now's the time to get out. Mm-hmm. Run, loop, run, get out now. Mm-hmm. But great. They're shutting that piece down. That's awesome. Because like I said, I mean, we've been saying for six months, the two most important skills in the next two to five years are going to be sub two and seller-based fin- creative financing, Absolutely. seller financing. Totally. Those are the two most important skills in the next two to five years to have. And if you've, far. and if you've invested a year ahead of time in building a world, a Dame Nair worldwide network, mm-hmm. he's going to crush it. He's going to have the best of the best choices. And, and again, uh, having talked to Cody, not Pace, talked to Cody, his partner, uh, they're flipping businesses way down on purpose because sure. they're smart investors. Smart. Uh, they have a couple left and they will always do some, uh, mm-hmm. but they will be steals. Uh, but yeah, dude, I expect their sub two business to, to be 20 X. Do they do any rental stuff? Uh, they have some, yeah. It's, uh, it, hold and, hold it's going to be a lot more here in a minute. <laughs> well, that's, that's my thought process, right? Is that you're not going to have a market to flip and wholesale a deal. No, they just stack inventory, right? right? That's what I'm saying. So you're not going to have a market to flip it. You're not going to have a market to redo it and sell it. So you might as well. Be able to yeah. run like this is what makes pace elite. This is what oh, makes yeah. guys elite is that yeah. you go with a strategy, but you know you have other options. And of course, because he makes a lot of money in other places, all this stuff. Like I told my audience, I'm not like I did 56 flips. I'm I'm not flipping this year because I want all the bonus depreciation cost segregation. Yeah. He does it too. He's like, I don't pay taxes. 
I write off all this, right? You know, I do cost seg and bonus depreciation, which again, we have a, a deep dive on uh, my playlist. So yes, uh, very good. I'm, good. I'm excited. Yeah. So it, it act, I did not go into that conversation with John thinking I would leave that with, wow, Phoenix and Vegas are so different. I was shocked by that. I, I mean, it, it's a little bit shocking. I mean, it's, this is why you do the work, right? We get down and we talk, your network is your network. Yeah. yeah. Talk with local experts. Don't guess. Don't sit in your mom's basement and look at pretty charts. Talk yeah. to experts. So yeah, Phoenix yeah. and Vegas are different. Yeah. People that have been there, that have been there for a while. Like that's why for me, it's like, I had talked to a few agents, but when I knew that, you know, Lebo's basically lived in that market for 26 years. Yeah. Yeah. That's my guy. Yeah. That's and, my guy. And John's been doing this since 2003 in Phoenix. We talked a little bit about pre and post crash and I'm like, yep, he gets it. We've been there. Yeah, so yeah, I, I, um, dude, I would have bet, I would have bet money, uh, pre John's conversation that Phoenix and Vegas are sisters and they're just not, I was, I was shocked. I was, I was shocked. Yeah. No more, uh, no more $700,000 three bedroom ranches. Exactly. Well, do us a favor, folks. Uh, where can they find you? Lumberjack Landlord on YouTube and Instagram, and then also live stream Sunday at 1130 a.m. Eastern time. That's awesome, man. Thanks again. Thanks, Mike. Mm -hmm.